we're back. Fat time video, guys. I know it's been a long time, um, and I know you guys are probably looking at these and going, what, what, what do we have going on here? But um, I, I, I'm trying to mitigate some of the weight that we take on the trail. At the same time, I'm trying to figure out a way to teach you guys uh, safer ways to do things, right? And that starts with this. So here they are. This is what I'm trying to do. So you guys watching this all should know what this guy is right here. Um, in Texas, we call this guy a widow maker. Um, it's been called a bunch of other things in other parts of the country, but, but here in Texas, it's the widow maker. And the reason why is the way it operates and it can be super dangerous. That's one of the first things I dislike about him. Secondly, I mean, they're super heavy. This thing is incredibly heavy for what it does. Now, I'm not saying this is any heavier than a Pro Eagle full size for say the Raptor or the Bronco, but it's just heavy. And I'm trying to get away from the thought that you have to spend that kind of money on a jack to be as versatile, right? Um, the biggest thing about this is, is there's a lot of things you can do with it. If you watch videos on using one of these, you'll see people, uh, they have rim straps that use to jack up the rim, uh, help put stuff underneath, and then put the tire back down on top of the extra stuff that you were uh, putting underneath the hole. And so that raises the whole vehicle. There's a lot of ways you can do that. You can use this as a come along on, attached to a, a chain, wrap the chain here. And as you ratchet this jack, it pulls like a come along would. So there's a lot of good things about it. Can you use them safely? Yes, I've been using them for a long, long time. Um, and, and so maintenance on them is, is pretty small, just as long as you keep it uh, you know, oiled or greased, however you wanna do it, silicone, and then a boot on it, it stays pretty good. And it's all weather, it can, can just hang out on your truck all year long. Um, the problem with it is there's not a lot of people that can operate one of these things. And so that's where this came in. So I was talking to some friends about a better way to do what we're doing. And I was just doing some research and I came across Brennan's Garage um, on Instagram and I saw this. And this is his solution. Now he's got a Facebook page as well. And I'm gonna show you, but that's why it's called Fab Time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy, which to you guys looks like a trailer jack. That's what it is. Um, but we're gonna make this a Multiple, multiple use trailer jack in a sense that it will no longer act as just a rise because we will actually attach a bar right here that has teeth on it and a foot. And so this will become the replacement for this. So ease of operation, anybody that's on the trail with you can operate this. They literally put it to where it goes set the foot in the height that it needs to be, and operates a hand crank. One way to go up, one way to go down. And there's nothing you have to do to worry about it. As soon as you let go, it's safe. That is not the case with this. If you let this go, and the weight of the vehicle is on the jack, and you let it go at the bar at the top position, and it falls down, it will spring back up. And all of a sudden, it will start going so fast that you cannot reach to close it or stop it because if it, it'll, it'll break your arm, if it hits your arm, it'll break your hand. Uh, it moves fast when there's 3,000 pounds of a vehicle on it. And when it goes down, it'll go down fast. So you hope that nobody's underneath it or that it causes any other kind of damage. That's why I say these are incredibly dangerous. The reason it gets its name, the Widowmaker, is because if in the time that you're jacking it up and you have the weight of the vehicle on this and you lose the ability to hold onto this leg, when it comes down and ratchets back up and comes back, it catches people in the head. And when it does, usually it does critical damage to your forehead or wherever it hits you in the head in the temple area. And generally, that's the last time you use it. So I'm used to using it, but the people that I go with aren't as efficient. And I don't want them to be in a position to use it, but also we're about making these vehicles the way I set mine up that in any situation, people could run up your video vehicle and get what they need. On the back of my vehicle, the Max Tracks are mounted on pins, you can pull it right off. 
in the back of the vehicle. There's air up tools and air down tools at the back of the vehicle. And the same one below it, there's all my stuff for recovery and there's a med bag outside of the vehicle. And the whole purpose for that is, is that way you can do things without having to tell them that it's behind the seat or under the seat or, you know, in this cubby or, or pull out this one bin and it's in my orange Rome case, mark number four. Instead of that, you want to have this stuff accessible. So I want to do the same thing with this. And so in any situation, anybody that I know could literally walk up to the vehicle, go get this for me. And all they're doing is grabbing this. Everything will be attached to it. You pull it off the mount and you go walking with it. Now, once it's finished, you'll see it'll have a foot just like this. You'll be able to attach to your bumper, um, into your rim lip, uh, on a slider. You can do a bunch of things with it. On top of that, you can use it for leveraging on a bumper. Um, you can use it to create space because it's a flat hard end. So you can take it and now do this with it. And now you have the ability to crank and force something away, if that makes sense. Um, this is a pro series jack. This is what we use on big trailers. This by itself will lift 8,000 pounds. So easily as capable as this, 150,000 times safer. And that's what I want you guys to know. Now, I'm not positive, but I think Brennan's Garage actually will put assemble this for you. You can, I think, reach out to them. They will locate the jack for you, order it, and then do all the modifications for you once it's finished, ship it to you. Um, obviously, because we do fab time here in the shop, we're gonna do it ourselves. Uh, one of the neat things about it is you think, oh, well, gosh, that's not very tall. So this being an 8,000 8, pound jack, it's incredibly tall. So, get it out of here, pull that out. So now you can raise this all the way to the top of the leg to where you need it before you even start. So now I think you guys see the versatility, okay? So from here, if I raise it all the way up, it'll go out of the frame of the camera. Now, even if it's full extended length, you can still use it to its full capacity. So it'll just keep on going and going. And if you look at the legs here, now you can kind of understand it. We'll put it on the ground. Okay, I'm a little bit below 5'9", and this is not even at the height of it. Excuse me. Um, I'm not at the full height of it, and it's almost mid chest to me. And so it'll continue doing this. So now I think you understand why I'm looking at the versatility of it. Oh, and for sure, you can, you can pick it up with one hand. You cannot, if I worked my butt off, I could carry that thing one-handed. Um, but the whole point of this is to make something safer for everyone to use. If you're out with your girlfriend, this is something she can do pretty easily, right? And if she let go of it, nothing's gonna happen to her. It's not gonna smack her, hit her with your kids. If you're, if you're with a buddy and you need to do some critical lifting, you're up looking at something or trying to realign a link arm that we've had to do before, um, lower control arm, all that stuff you're doing on a trail. Well, if you don't have the things that you need in the shop, well, it's really kind of hard to be precise. Well, with this cranking ability, now you can be more precise. Now, you can lift something to where it's exactly where it needs to be, so it's another set of hands holding something that lines up. Once you get that lined up, you can run bolts back through uh, and a lot of things like that. And so, I think now you guys can better understand why I'm saying don't kill yourselves anymore and stop buying these jacks. Most of the people I encounter are new to the trail uh, or new to any kind of outdoor life. And so this is the last thing I think you need to use. Um, just a quick search. I saw people breaking arms, breaking hands, collarbones. It come while they were crouched down in front of it, jacking it like this, it let go, opened, came back and smacked them on the collarbone, broke it. So now you got a flat tire and a broken collarbone and you're in the middle of Colorado or Wyoming or Utah, that's a problem. So, without any more preaching, I think we just need to get to it. I'm gonna show you guys how it all goes together. 
It's a simple fab time project. Even if you don't, um, even if you can't do it yourselves, this is something you can order. Um, I will, uh, in this video, up in here, here, I'll put the uh, I'll put the cost and part number of this jack. It wasn't expensive, 100 bucks or something, maybe? Maybe 100 bucks. And then the, the bracket kit, and let's look at this real quick, from Brennan's Garage, that actually goes onto this. And you'll see once you see it, it's a hell of an idea and genius because again, it, it, it turns something that is potentially dangerous into something that's incredibly safe. So here it is. Now, uh, I did not get a discount with them. It's, it, it'll come just as you come. And I'm gonna bring this to you so you can see it. But, so what you'll see right here is you can see how now it now operates, okay? So now, this, will be welded onto the front of that jack and this foot apparatus attaches to it. That's what sets your initial height. And then from there, you jack it up how you want it. So you can see how much safer this is gonna be. So let's get going. So as a hard-headed uh, adult male, I'll stress right now, directions, directions, directions. Do things once, not twice. Read once, measure once, uh, cut once. Anyway, you can see I'm just glancing over the directions now, trying to familiarize myself. Obviously, this is a do-it-at-home kit, so it's been engineered as such. But remember, they still leave a little bit of um, wiggle room for you to kind of put your own spin on it. That being said, right now I'm basically reading it to try to determine how they want it to be welded. Obviously they've done the engineering on this kit so they know what structurally the jack housing can handle and the welding brackets can handle. So just read the directions and kind of understand how they want to do it. Now I'm just kind of trying to understand uh, the fit and finish of the, of the parts. And look at this, Th these cuts are incredible. Uh, the finish is incredible and so I'm super happy with that when you have a product like that it's super easy to come out with a really good product at the end because there's very little fab work to make the piece better or fit better they all are machined and cut really really precisely so the pieces are precision pieces that you put together now it's not a precision piece of equipment but the precision they put into the metal cutting is incredible so hats off to them uh, you can see I'm messing with the foot right now, trying to understand how it goes together. So there were, I can formulate a plan on how to weld it and what needs to be welded and what seems to be welded versus messing up something that they don't want to happen. Obviously, you could weld a seam in the wrong place and then it wouldn't fit properly. So again, take your time. Projects are leisure projects. This isn't something that is mandatory that I get done immediately. It's not something that I need to force to get done. So... Um, obviously I was sick and I had to take four days off, but now I'm just looking at finishing it. And so I'm just kind of breezing through the instructions and fit and finish and, and I'll get it all prepared and ready to go. And then, you know, then when it's done, it's done and get a better product in the end. If you take a, that kind of approach to your project, if you're going to rush it, it's going to come out wrong. So when you're working with metal, be slow. Welding causes metal to twist and move when it heats and cools. So take that uh, take that in advance and know it in advance and therefore you'll be a better welder and a better fabricator for it. So slow, easy, leisure. I mean, that's why we're here, right guys? To learn. Okay, hey, hey, sorry. Uh, let me catch you guys up real quick. Um, we we were shooting this during the uh, holiday weekend or holiday week, and come Thursday, I got super sick, so I ended up having to cancel recording anything else. So fast forward now to Sunday, and here we are. So let's get to it. Over the sickness, now it's ready to build.
Okay guys, I wanna show you this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch weld this, okay? We're just gonna do stitches just like that. And what it says is to weld each flat spot to the jack. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work my way down this. So as I do a few stitches, I'm gonna let it cool. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move over to this guy. And what I'll do is you can see the portions in it that need to be stitched. Um, and I'll just do one side and let it, let it cool. And then I'll move back to this guy. So anyway, that's how they came out first pass. So uh, we're looking good and we'll just continue to do the same. Quick note, um, the last time we were doing a weld time video, shot time video, somebody asked why you stitch. And the reason why you stitch is because you don't want to put too much tension on this metal um, while you're attaching another piece of metal. Meaning that structurally this is built in a tube, right? So then you're attaching this and as you heat and cool this side, it starts you know, wanting to do this. So what you want to do is you want it to cool and heat evenly so that as you're welding, uh, across this and across this platform, you're not getting any twisting or, or uh, energy pulling one way from another. Like as this one's heating, this one's cooling and it's pulling back and forth. So you see why I went right across from each other. And that way it's cooling in the same fashion and heating in the same fashion. So that's why we stitch weld and that's why it's a smart way to do long welds like this is instead of being contiguous. If I ran this whole bead, it would be so hot and I guarantee you, it would end up torquing this piece of metal, no matter how thick and big it is. So, tech tip, remember that, guys. Okay guys, as you can see, it's, uh, it's all put together, welded in here and here, welded around the lips, both sides, and underneath and across and around. And of course, this they're calling it a weld nut. It's the capture nut for the actual pin that slips in this hole. So it's welded on. Um, I'm not welding this back piece right here, and the reason being is because the way it sits, I don't want the welds to interfere, which they possibly could but I think that there's enough stability in it that it doesn't matter. Um, I may look at it and rethink that, but for now, that's what I'm thinking. As far as this, uh, you can see they're all clean, they're all ready, and I'm gonna hit it with a, a flat disc, one of, the, one of the smoother style sanding discs you saw on my um, DA earlier, and I'm just gonna clean it up real quick, and then it's ready for paint. So we're super, super close. So let's keep going. All right, let's get it up. Let's see here. There's this, now you guys can see this. See what I'm talking about? See how this is welded on here on the ridge? And so this is what the foot will actually attach it to. Let's get the foot, let's dry. Okay, let's Okay, here it is. All right. The foot. Here is the foot. It's finished drying. You can see that pin bolt. That's what's gonna act as like uh, what, what sets the jack in place. So I'm gonna pick a standard height. I mean, I don't really know. I'm guessing that gets under most things. I guess you could move it if you needed to. Um, so I'm assuming how it works is bolt, washer, And then I'm gonna say, pin through the back. Ooh, I'm gonna have to make those a little bigger, guys. Look at that. Put 
barely, I mean, it, it is so tight, guys, I'm having to thread it in. So, um, let's give it a little help. It's not one to go. So, let's take it over real quick. Um, man, it doesn't need much either. I mean, it's literally right on there. And you know that may be a reason, but it's not gonna press in. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean these out. I didn't check it before, but obviously you see that now. So I'll clean these out and then we'll come back over here. See if we can't get it to work. Okay. I didn't really need to show you guys that. All I did was take a, a drill with the same size as the hole and just clean it out a little bit. It took a second. So, um, I'm gonna pick right here as my starting point because I don't really know. Um, obviously, once you learn your vehicle, uh, for certain situations, you'll probably kind of have it set to where you want, right? You know, I don't know um, how they kind of recommend it, but that's what I would assume. So now, um, I guess this is going to go in here like such, and then this washer goes like that, and then we're going to thread this piece onto this lock, right? Is that how it works here? Yes. Um, if, <laughs> if we can get it to go, the start. So, that's what we're having a problem with now is getting it to start is just a hair short. Um, these are just been out just a hair. So we may need to pull that in some. So let me do this. Let me see if I can get it to do it this way. We'll use this to kind of cinch it up a little, huh? Kind of take up that gap. And then once that gap's taken up, then we should be able to you know, use it properly, I guess. And that took it up a lot. Let's see if that's enough to, to um, get it to fit. And this is, guys, this is what comes with, uh, you know, using new parts, right? We're, we're just trying to best figure out what this thing likes. Um, and I don't know how much it'll need, but... Just trying to kind of get the tension set to where I think it should be. Maybe one less. Something like that. Feels good. Okay, and then I guess if we need to move it. And again, you know, this is just freshly painted, so I'm sure it's gonna be a little, a little tacky or a little tight, but I think you get the point. So now, let's put it in action, right? All right, let's go to testing time. Testing time! So, let's see how it works. All right, so here's what I need to check. I'm gonna just use the front of my bumper. I'm just gonna use the hoop just so I can demonstrate to you guys. Um, Good enough. That's too tall, so we'll go to this one. That looks about right, right? Yeah, so we're gonna get in there. Okay, it's on it. So you guys should start seeing it moving the bumper down. Look at this. This, 
Are you kidding me? Is it that easy? Guys, is it really this easy? Are you kidding me? Here, just for chits and giggles. Oh my God. Okay, there you have it. I don't think I need to show you guys anymore. That's ridiculous. All kids, kids, women, everybody can operate this. Novice, beginner, um, this is a hell of a tool to have in your arsenal. Um, looking at it, the one thing I would probably change uh, before I want to say anything, I want to say, hey, Brennan's Garage, hell of an idea, super smart way to do it. This is, this is nuts. Um, it, this really is nuts. Um, it's super secure. It's an incredible platform. I love it. One thing I would probably do to mine is I would probably make a bigger square base just because I like everything symmetrical. And I think if we went, you know, an eight by eight platform, it would be super stable anywhere. Um, and that's big enough also that you can dig up and bury and put down and give you a solid base if you need to do some crazy stuff. Um, nevertheless, I think it's a hell of an idea. It's super well executed. Um, and, and again, depending on your vehicle, you'll probably set the thing and leave it in whatever height that you want. That way you take it off and you know that it'll probably slide into one of your big bumpers or your uh, rock sliders, no matter what, and you're here. And then again, you can drop it, you can drop it all the way down to there. So, super versatile. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Okay, guys, I guess this is the video. Uh, remember, everything I've used in the video, that including that jack, I'll link it in the below. It's got an affiliate link so you can go and just click on it, it'll take you right to it. Remember, those are paid affiliate links. Uh, but anything in these videos, I always put down there and below. Also, at the end, I'll run the card, his card, so you can see it as well. Um, but I think you can see how this would easily take the place of a Widowmaker. No longer will Widowmaker be taking swaps at me, because <laughs> I've got this guy. I'll still run him. He'll still probably stay on the Raptor, but this is going to go on the Bronco for sure. Um, that being said, remember to like, share, comment. Uh, please ask any questions you want, anything you need to know, or anything you saw that could have been done better. Uh, let me know. Let me know below, and uh, let this, let's get this thing cooking this year. Anyway, thanks for watching.